What is going on everybody? David here and today I got a brand new video for y'all and this time we will be reviewing the Jurassic World Battle Damage Spinosaurus. Now I'm pretty excited about this one is because one has a new feature to it and second that this Spinosaur is a Walmart exclusive. I know that a lot of people do not like or enjoy exclusives but for the simple fact that this is a Walmart exclusive, this gives everybody a chance that missed out on the Legacy Collection uh, Spinosaurus to finally be able to add a Spinosaurus to their collection. And um, we all know who that Target made a big fiasco out of the whole Legacy Collection Spinosaurus and they had their own reasons as to why they didn't want to stock it and, and so forth. But uh, that's no longer... Uh, an issue anymore because Walmart has picked up this and decided to stock it for the Christmas holidays and uh, so these are now currently in stores now so if you're interested in getting one uh, check your local Walmarts there's plenty of them out there and uh, so hopefully everybody gets a chance that missed out on the Legacy Collection one is able to get this one so moving on to the figure <clears throat> uh, we're gonna go with packaging real quick and then we will take the figure out and go over the figure when we're going to do some size comparisons and we might do a little collection update we'll see and um so let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging so as you can tell this is a big figure and then on the uh top left hand corner you have the jurassic world logo and then at the bottom you have a little demonstration on how the uh battle damage works and then up here you have the finger pointing down to the spine to where you can activate the uh, feature. And then on the top uh, right hand corner you have the uh, Spinosaurus a jaw demonstration how you can uh, press the top of the head to activate the feature. And then you have the nice uh, uh, Jurassic World logo or Jurassic Park logo should I say with the T-Rex. And you have the nice nostalgia uh, colors for the uh, card back. With the uh, <clears throat> black, yellow, orange, and red all blended in together. Kind of reminiscent of the old Kenner days. And uh, there and at the bottom, you have Rexy right there. And you have Spinosaurus in the middle. And then you have Battle Damage on the bottom right-hand corner. And if we turn around the uh, packaging... You have in the middle, you have this nice uh, artwork here or a prototype image of the Spinosaurus showing how to activate the battle damage with the finger pointing down there. How you can open it up and then expose it and activate the, uh, um, the, the battle damage feature. And then you have the uh, finger point down there to hit the uh, back of the head or neck and it'll activate the jaws. You get the Jurassic World logo right there. Then here on the top left-hand corner, you have the Jurassic Facts app information. And then it says activate battle damage. And then down here, it says flip down. So it shows you on one and two that, uh, how to act, uh, activate the damage and so forth. And then down here, it shows you a couple of uh, battle damage dinosaurs that you have in the assortment line. And then down here, it just says one dinosaur. And then you have uh, <clears throat> a warning down there that says, talks about uh, small parts. And at the bottom of packaging, it has, you have the uh, UPC number, and then you have all the copyright data information, the Patel logo and such. And then you have this little uh, arrow here that instructs you to flip the uh, this piece out, and you can unscrew the uh, pegs that hold the feet in. Okay, so we're moving over to packaging, so let's go ahead and take this Spinosaur out, and so that way we can um, take a closer look at it. But before we do that, I do want to show a comparison to the Hasbro one that came out a few years ago. And uh, we'll scoot this thing over right here, and let's go ahead and bring out the Hasbro version. So, as you can tell... I always like doing these little comparisons compared to what Mattel has done to what Hasbro has done with their particular dinosaurs. If Hasbro has the dinosaurs that I can compare it to with the Mattel ones, which is not very many. So, but anyways, as you can tell, the Spinosaurus with the, the Hasbro have made, which is real 
crappy <laughs> compared to the one that uh, Mattel's made. And plus, it's in, it's in scale with the three and three quarter figures. So, anyways, let's go ahead and break the Spino out of the package and take a closer look at it. All right, so we got the Spinosaurus out of its uh, packaging. And let's take a closer look at the paint scheme and go over the articulation and see if it has any improvements over the Legacy Collection Spino. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring this uh, girl in here, take a closer look at it. And um, what I do like about it is I do like this paint scheme. A lot of people don't. They prefer the... Um, Legacy Collection one better, which is fine, you know, and it's all about preference, you know, but I, I do like this one better as it kind of, you know, it's more aquatic like, in my opinion, and it kind of fits forward more if it's natural habitat, you know, if you know what I mean, but, um, I really do like the, uh, the blue on it, mixed in with a little bit of like, uh, let me say like a yellowish color, like right here on the legs. It's like kind of like a like a goldish color right there along the spines right there and on top of the head. So I think they did a very good job with that. And um, the eye color is perfect on this side. And I do like the way they did the teeth. Um, when I did go hunt for this thing, um, a few times the teeth that I saw was all bled in, all like on the gum line and stuff, and I didn't like that very much. So let's go ahead and turn this around right here. And as you can tell, it's perfect right there, and the eye is perfect as well. Love the uh, texturing, top of the head, get that alligator like feel to it. And um, <clears throat> did a very nice job. As far as everything, even though it's the same mold and everything, the only difference is the battle damage feature and the paint scheme. And one of the rare times where they actually did paint the dew claws and such, but they never did paint these claws. I think on the Legacy Collection they did, but um, I guess they just only, ooh, looks like I got a little chip right there. Eh, oh well, is what it is. But as far as the tail goes, the tail, you know, it's a little bit more sturdy. I know that a lot of times uh, on the uh, Legacy Collection, the tail would, like, droop if you moved around too much, you know, because it was one of those things where you had to clip in on yourself. And if you moved it around a lot, it would just slowly but surely just droop like this. But this seems like it's been um, done pretty well, you know. And as far as the articulation goes, um, it looks like the, the legs are a little bit stiff. And um, you go forward and back. You know, it does got that inner thigh movement. And uh, forward and back right here. It doesn't have that ratchet joint like the other one does. Even though it does, it just doesn't have that clicking sound. And then as far as the arms go... They're on a ball and hinge, so you can move forward and outwards, up and down. So, really like that. And I like the fact that, like, the hinge part is uh, hidden, you know, because normally some of them, they would have that little hinge there all sticking down and stuff, but it's fairly well done on this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the, the head is up on the ball joint, you know, the rotation. So... You look this way, this way, up and down. So very nice right there. So as far as the action feature goes, we'll go to the first one with the head. So you press this button right here. And voila. So, so very good on that end. And then for the battle damage portion of it. <clears throat> now this part you flip down. And this has that real feel skin to it. Kind of remembering this of the uh, old Kenner days, the rubber feel. And if they was going to do that, they should have just did the whole dinosaur that, that way. But it's all good, though. So, 
as you can see it has that flesh right there all you got to do is just peel it off and um, it does have these uh, four pegs right here and they just clip in over here I do like the fact they have that pinkish flesh right there that exposes the, the rib cage as well and then you flip that down and then you have that uh, ball right there <clears throat> that's supposed to be blood and um, I liked how they uh, made that pink too as well. So then you go to right here and then you'll flip it and it just moves that blood around. So my question is how long is that liquid going to stay in there? Because I know a lot of vintage toys that used to come with this kind of gimmick with the blood in there all dried out and everything. So, so we'll see how long that holds up. <clears throat> But I really do like this battle damage. I think Mattel did a great job with this gimmick. And they reinvented uh, the battle damage gimmick in different ways. So that's very awesome on their part. As you can tell, this is that real feel rubber thing. <clears throat> so just latch that back on there. Fairly easy to uh, uh, put back on. Not hard at all. So let's go ahead and move her back and let's do some size comparisons but first I want to compare it to some other Spinosaur figures. Alright so here is the Legacy Collection Spino that's in front and then you have the Battle Damage in the back and if you notice the thing that's different is it mirror images you know. Because you can tell that the front foot is forward this way and the back is backwards that way. And as far as that one is backwards and this one's forward. But, you know, it's probably because so they can do the battle damage. So that's a very unique part of that. But other than that, everything's the same. And on this one, they did paint the claws. As you can tell that the claws are painted on that one. This one isn't. So, but, uh... Let me know in the comments below what you prefer. Do you prefer the Legacy Collection one? Or do you prefer the Battle Damage one? Next up we have the uh, JP3 Posable Spinosaurus. Um, I did have um, the little smaller Spino, but I faded that away. And I also did have the Lost World uh, Spinosaurus as well, and I traded that away as well. But I do need to get another one of those because I really like that one. Mine just was just warped so bad I just couldn't stand. So I just didn't need it because I wanted something that's going to stand. So hopefully one day I'll be able to find a uh, a good Lost World Spino that can actually stand. So anyways, as you can tell, the scaling of this one, you know, nice little scale. You know, it's not bad. But the battle damage is a little bit bigger. But I do like the size of this. I do like the size and scaling of this as well, you know. Uh, my goal is to one day own or get the uh, um, the animatronic Spino. You know, I would like to have that one. You know, that that's a grail of mine that I would like to get for my Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World collection. So I think that would be a fun piece to have as well. Here we have the uh, Suchomimus, you know, along with the Spino. They're pretty much in the same family. So this is a, a nice scaling right here. And as you can tell, they kind of have similar paint schemes, you know, that, that aquatic look and everything. So it goes good together. And then another member of the family is the Baryonyx. So we have the green Baryonyx right here. Scales up nicely right there. I'm very happy, happy about that. Next scaling is we have the uh, Thrash and Throw T-Rex, T-Rex, not the Thrash and Throw, the Bite and Fight T-Rex. So, it's a very good scaling right here. The Spino is a little bit bigger. Not by much, but it is a little bit bigger. Really like that scaling right there. Another scaling I like to do is the Massive Hippo from the Jumanji toy line by uh, Lannard. And so, Massive Hippo is not so massive against the Spinosaurus. And we've got the rock next to it as well. So, very good size. 
The rock is like a, a four inch figure. Next we have uh, Paul Kirby from the JP3 toy line. This is a three and three quarters figure. So he scales up pretty nicely with it. So very happy uh, I still have all my JP3 human figures that, that, go and scale, that can go and scale with the Mattel Jurassic World stuff. And next up we have the Dominus Rex in the Spino. And as you all know, the Dominus Rex is the superior species of the two. Way bigger. So I do like the skeleton of this. Very nice size. Love it. I think it goes very nicely with that. So, very good. Very cool. And last but not least, we have the scaling between the Spino and the Brachiosaurus. So, nothing needs to be said on this one. We know who the dominant species is with this size scaling. So, very cool, very cool. Really love this figure. And I think it scales in really nicely with everything else that we have. And with that being said, here's my little collection update with the Dino Rivals Battle Damage uh, collection line. Uh, the only only one that I have is the Albertosaurus, and uh, really do like this figure, and uh, I do want to do another review on this if I can. Um, but I also do have the Pteranodon that I'm going to save for another review later on, and I am looking for the Battle Damage Plesiosaurus, and I do have a friend of mine that went ahead and picked me up the three uh, Battle Damage uh, dinos that are, I guess you could say, exclusively to Canada. That's the only place that I've heard people find them at. I don't know if it's any other countries, but I do know that there's not here in the United States. So, real excited to get those pretty soon. And then, once I get those, I will do a review of those. So, this is my little collection update with the, the battle damage line, and I'm looking forward to, to continue to grow. And I hope y'all enjoyed uh, this video as much as I enjoyed filming it for you guys. So uh, leave it in the comments below what you think of this uh, Battle Damage Spinosaurus. And if you have it in your collection, let me know your thoughts on it. Or if you're looking to add it to your collection, let me know as well. And where's the wisdom? Buy what you love and not what you like. Because if you buy what you like, you always end up getting rid of it. And I will catch y'all later.